Hey everyone, my name is Nicole Richardson and today is uh, December 17th, 2021. I'm here with Barbara Celeste McCloskey, uh, author of Finding Gessler. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Barbara? Well, it all depends how far you <laughs> want to go back. But I was born in a blue collar village uh, of, named Sturdivant um, in the 1950s. I was the baby boomer. And I grew up in the 50s and then I was a teenager in the 60s. So it was kind of a, the 60s was an interesting period. Uh, after high school, I went to work as a secretary because my parents decided I didn't need to go to college. Um, I married at 19 and had two kids with my first husband. And then about, oh, once they got into school at age 35, I went to college and I graduated magna cum laude at 39 with a degree in English and communication, as well as a women's study minor. I, during those years, I <clears throat> carried uh, a full load of credits. I had a part-time job and of course I cared for my family at all at the same time. It was a challenge, uh, but college opened my eyes to new worlds, through meeting new people, and through reading and studying. I, I loved it. Uh, I divorced at 40 and began my life for the first time. By now, I was strong enough not to let other people tell me what to do. I enjoyed a 20-year career in marketing communications, both in agency settings and corporate settings. And toward the end of, the, of that, uh, I got involved with internet development and e-commerce. I, um, I also wrote freelance for periodicals. My second marriage was happy for 22 years, and it ended when my husband, Ken, died after suffering from MS. Since his death two years ago, I've had to reinvent myself again. And I live happily with my cat, Louie, and my dog, Ben. My condolences, but um, I'm sorry that you I hope you don't mind my little personal comment, but you seem to be doing really well in your life and I'm happy for you to be doing well if you are. Thank you. Um, okay, so on to our next question. Uh, what inspired you to write and when did your passion in writing begin? I always enjoyed writing um, since the time I figured out how words work together. And I started writing when I was in grade school and at that time, we didn't have email. We wrote letters. And first I wrote to my Aunt Mary, who lived in California. Then I wrote to my cousin Vicki, who lived in Colorado. And through that correspondence, I learned about them and I learned about where they lived. And in a personal way, I also learned about um, how things were different in different parts of the country. I continued writing for many years to friends who moved away for work or some other reason. And I always uh, was excited to receive their letters because people always told me things in letters they probably never would have told me face to face. And you know, I noticed that me myself, when I write letters to my sister, uh, she lives across the country in Tennessee. Um, we can always talk so much deeper in our letters than we do in person. Right. So I can I can completely understand where that comes from and how that happens because I experience it myself. Yeah, I'm surprised you write letters because it's kind of a dying art. <laughs> uh, her and I, we never let it die because we live so far from each other. Um, we make it a point to write handmade letters to each other and not just email. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. What was your inspiration when you started to write and publish your first book? Uh, is Finding Gessler your first book? No, actually it's not. It's about the third or fourth book. 
um, I, I didn't think I could ever write a novel because I had always done, you know, short stories or articles for periodicals. And, you know, there's a word limit. Usually the, the highest word limit was 3,000 words. Well, novels, a lot more than that. Um, but I started writing after I ghost wrote a book for someone else. Um, through that experience, it proved to me that I could tell a story in a long way. <laughs> um, I always was fascinated by the decades of the 1930s and the 1940s because so much was going on in the world at that time. There was the depression and then the war in Europe and then we were attacked by the Japanese. There was just so much going on. So I found that very exciting and interesting. My first book was about British girls and women and what they experienced. And through my research, I learned that they were actually conscripted to go to work in all kinds of different ways. Finding Gessler came afterwards, and I was inspired by a documentary about a Yugoslavian man who became a double agent for the British. And then I wrote the prequel, Strudelgor, excuse me, Strudel Girls, after Finding Gessler, simply because I had a lot of people come to me and wanted to know the backstory of one of the main characters, Heidi, and what happened to her. Uh, I guess I'm a little like George Lucas, who wrote Star Wars and then wrote the prequels to that series. I also wrote another book, um, The Subversive, which continues the Gessler story. I, uh, the characters just wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> that actually, uh was one of the questions that I wanted to ask for myself is if your book is a standalone. Um, and that answers that question, no, it's not. Well, actually, a, a person could read the book and be satisfied, but if they want to know more, there's two other books. So I try to write them um, as standalones, but the same characters pop up in each book. Like, they're different stories, but they are intertwined yes yes i like that a lot i really like that because i find myself getting attached to book characters and wanting to read more into them but also craving for a different kind of book if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah, it does make sense like the Me same characters because i relate to them or i am comfortable with them and but a different story yeah as an author you get they kind of get under your skin and and they say Hey, I got a little more to say. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit more about Finding Gessler? Like, what is the message you want to convey to us with this book? Okay. Um, we've all heard a lot about what happened in Germany during the war, especially stories about the Holocaust, and because so much has been written and, and produced about that, I didn't really want to get into it. So. What I wanted to do is tell a different story about a Jewish family who became separated after Poland was invaded by the Nazis and what happened to those characters. Um, if I had to pin down a message, it probably would be that family is at the heart of all of us. We want to belong to something bigger than we are. And we, we need to be loved and, and we need to be cared for and supported and our family members need that from us. So I wanted to explore the lengths that family members would go to preserve those relationships. Right, right. And come, and come to think very of it. Far. Yeah, come to think of it, that thread carries through most of my novels. That's actually um, a really powerful message, you know? It's a message that a lot of people can relate to as well. Yeah. So I uh, am giving you a little bit more of my personal comments, but I think that uh, hopefully people will watch this interview and get a little bit of insight into your book that it'll draw a lot of people in, knowing what your message is and how you're trying to get to people and just what it's all about. I think that it'll get far if people just listen. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> you know, 
I think they're good stories and I'd, I'd like to get them in the hands of people that would enjoy them. That uh, leads me to one of my next questions. What's your, what is your goal as an author? I think all authors explore themselves as they move through their stories. Um, for me, that's certainly true. And next, I wanted to be published because that's the only way your story can get out there. And it's a daunting thing if you walk into a big bookstore and you go, oh my God, this is all my competition. Um, in college, we used to sit around the coffee shop and, and joke about <clears throat> who was gonna write the next great American novel. I think that all English majors talk about that kind of stuff. But it, um, I think all authors also want to tell a good story and get them in the hands of people that would enjoy them. And I'm definitely not any different than that. And my goal is to hear that people enjoy my stories. That's all I really want. You know, royalties are great, but it's not at the heart of what I want out of my writing. Finally, I want to continue my writing and make it stronger and more in depth. Um, the first book was definitely not as good as the second book as the third book. And, you know, it goes on and on because you learn to look for your faults in your writing and um, you try to put more sensual kinds of things in, not sex, but sensual things like smells and tastes. Right, right. And things that things that draw the reader in that make them not only read it, but feel it, to right. experience it, right. to get lost in the words. You right. know, when you're reading something and you forget that you're in a room with people and you look up and your eyes hurt because you're you were just in the scene. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's what you want. Yeah. And what many people don't understand about writing is that it, it's never finished, ever. It just have a deadline. Very good. Mm -hmm. I think the only time a story can really be finished is when the author decides that there's no more that they could squeeze out of it. True. You always can revise. Even, even then, a couple years from then, they'll probably be like, wait a second. I have <laughs> Did no I idea. really write this? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just have a, a couple more questions for you before I want to wrap this up. Um, sure. Where can readers find out more about you and your books? Where can they find out about me and my books? Um, well, I did have a blog for a while. I haven't written uh, it very much, but my books can be found on Amazon and, and other booksellers. Um, and, and, you know, you guys take care of that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. And that kind of leads me to my next question. How do you feel about working with Authors Press? It's been a very satisfying experience. I, I think that you guys do a very good job, very professional. Um, I worked with another company before um, you guys came along and um, the experience was very, very different. I'm, I'm glad you had different and positive experiences here. That's what we want. We want positive experiences. So uh -huh. me too. <laughs> um, gosh, I think that's all the questions I have for you. Thank you so much okay. for meeting with me today, Barbara. Uh, I appreciate the honor to get to discuss your book from a a topic that I am very interested in, but from a different story point, that's very interesting to me and very drawing as well. Great. I hope you get a chance to read it. I probably will because I'm a total addict. I can't not buy this. <laughs> You're in a good spot then. <laughs> I am. Working here at Authors Press is like the best job ever for me. I fit in so well here. Oh, great. That's great.
If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out to Authors Press either via our phone number or our email. And don't forget that we do have a website, um, www.authorspress.com. Um, yeah, that's it. It was such a pleasure to talk to you. It's nice talking to you too. Have a wonderful day. It was nice talking to you. Okay, bye-bye.